The typical advice to reach financial freedom doesn't work for everybody. In fact, most people like you even are probably farther along than you think. But this process defies space, time, and reality. I promise, but I'll get to that. In this video, I'm gonna show you the seven levels of financial freedom where time doesn't always equal progress or isn't a good measure of progress at least. And where money comes from places you wouldn't even expect. I call this Fortuna's method and you'll see why. So let's jump right into step one. This is the vision step. And there's three parts to building your vision. This step, we're going to uncover and assess your finances. Now, I want you to pretend you're like an elite level detective and everything you discover about your account statements, about the way you spend money, about your debt, about interest rates, all of it is just fascinating data that's pulling together a story of how you and money have built your relationship together. The biggest tip I have for this part of the stage is that I don't want you to judge yourself here. It's so easy for us to look back and think, oh my gosh, I've been terrible with money. How can I reach financial freedom? It feels so far away, right? So really take that observer perspective here, that detective perspective, and just you're putting together a case file and you're sort of seeing where things are connected and trends. You're analyzing your own financial story up until this point. I pause here and recommend that you start a journal. And maybe it's your regular journal, maybe you have a good journaling practice, but maybe this is a specific journal for you to understand better about what your money story is, because let me tell you money finds its way into every nook and cranny of our life and our money story can impact a big way that we live our lives so let's start to use this process to uncover that and this is where the big keys of defying space and time and reality are going to come into play because money let me drop this is not real <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You have bills in your wallet, hopefully, or you can see numbers on your Venmo account, but money comes from strange places and you have to trust that where it came from in the past may not be where it comes from in the future. Okay, I'll pause there. Now, when you assess your finances, I want you to start to think about, and maybe you can journal about this, which of my expenses do I need for bare minimum survival, right? And then which are like extra, which are kind of on the top, which help my life get more convenience? And am I actually enjoying that convenience? These are great journaling prompts for this first stage, your vision stage. I also want you to think about which pieces of your spending bring you the most joy. And then the next time you spend money in that way, feel that joy. This data that you're pulling out with your journaling prompts is often more valuable than like how much you spent with DoorDash last month. So really pay it as much respect as putting to everything together into a spreadsheet, which brings me to the second part of stage one is you are gonna wanna pull this into a budget or some sort of tracking system. Now, I use Empower, this video is not sponsored. There's a lot of different systems that can even pull different credit card statements because some of us are playing the travel hacking game and you're gonna be able to assess which are your spending categories, where you're spending month after month, really just dive in deep to what you're doing with your money up until this point. Okay, the final part of this stage is to create a big goal. And some people call this a B-hag, B-H-A-G, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Now, if you could do something with money extravagant down the road, if you could live an extravagant lifestyle or just give extravagantly, what would that look like? What's a big goal? And throw it out there with no analysis. We're not calculating our financial independence number right now. I know you're thinking you wanna do that, but pause. Trust me, just think of a big goal that you wanna create. Get your mind thinking in terms of goals that as they relate to your finances and throwing out wild ideas. That's a big part of the magic of this process. Okay, stage two is your foundation. This is where you're creating self-sufficiency with your finances. This is where you're earning enough to cover all of your expenses, right? You're not getting into any new debt. You're going to establish an emergency savings fund, which is about three to six months, I recommend, of your total monthly expenses maybe like your survival expenses to just get started. And then you're gonna also want to get rid of all debt. Okay, let's pause here and bring in time and space again into this process. And because this is where the Fortuna's method comes in. Fortuna is the goddess of fortune and the personification of luck in Roman religion. 
Some people think of her as the goddess of chance. Now, why would we be labeling some sort of very financial, very accounting-like method with someone who is based on chance and luck? It's because so much of our financial journey is based on chance and luck. And by you starting to acknowledge these little points of magic along the way, like, wow, I thought about this big debt that I had and what it would be like to be free of that debt. And then suddenly something came into my life that allowed me to help me pay that down a lot quicker. This kind of magic happens all the time with money when we start to dig down deeper. So trust me, this is Fortuna's method. Okay, so on our foundation level, right, we're gonna earn all of our expenses. We're not getting into new debt. We're going to have an emergency savings fund and we're gonna pay down all our debt. Now this might take you different amounts of time, right? We all have different amounts of debt and these stages that we're going through might start to overlap a little bit. I'm not telling you you have to get rid of all debt before you start investing. I'm just telling you you have to do it soon. Okay, step number three is the launch pad. This is an exciting one because you're gonna start to rev things up a little bit here. Guess what? There's three parts to launch pad too. All right, the first one is to increase your income. Now I want you to remember that our potential to make money is really limitless. I had to break through this over and over again and I'm probably continuing to break through the idea that my an hour of my time is worth X amount of money. That is false. I can spend one hour doing extraordinary amounts of work and one hour doing barely anything because I'm tired and exhausted and I haven't gone to the gym that day. And that amount of time is sort of worth different amounts of money. So start increasing your income and don't put a cap on it, right? Imagine that it is possible for you to make extraordinary amounts of income down the road. So start taking the time to do that. You might start a business. You might have some passive income coming in. There's a lot of different ways to make income. There might be just negotiating a raise at your current employer. There's a lot of steps you can do. So right now I want you to think about ways you can increase your income. The second part is we're gonna optimize our expenses except that we're gonna start to think about our biggest levers here. And I'm talking about like your rent, maybe your car payment or your transportation. How can you take these big expenses and bring them down? Because that's gonna make bigger progress or It's gonna move the needle much more than you just like not eating out one night a week or cutting out lattes or something silly like that. There's some cool strategies, especially within real estate investing world, of you basically getting rid of your housing cost altogether. This is some people's 50% of their income. Hopefully not you, hopefully you're more like 30%. That's a good threshold to come down to. But to be able to get rid of this major expense or at least bring it down is a huge impact to how much money you can save and invest as you go. And then finally in Launchpad, you are gonna start investing. That's right, get it together and put your money somewhere where it's making its own money. Now, I don't even want you to spend a lot of time thinking about the best way to do this, the best accounts to set up, which one to go into first. Just pick a strategy and start getting your money working. Pick something like index fund investing, which is, you don't have to learn a lot about the stock market to do that. Or pick something like real estate crowdfunding through a real estate syndication, which I'll link to more information above about that option, so that you can invest passively in real estate. You don't have to learn about the markets you don't have to learn about becoming a landlord in fact you don't ever have to learn about that kind of stuff to be a real estate investor but start getting your money invested now okay before I dive into step four if this is helping you at all please go ahead and like and subscribe this channel it would really help me reach more people I appreciate it okay stage four of Fortuna's method is refinement and strategy this is where we're getting really like nerding out on the subject So your financial independence number is traditionally like that amount of net worth that you need to have invested in index funds or in the stock market to be able to withdraw your annual expenses now every year without that amount dropping off into the pit of abysmal sadness and running out of money in retirement, right? And this number is calculated by taking your annual expenses and multiplying it by 25. Now that's a rough net worth number. So a quick calculation is like if your expenses are $40,000, congrats, because that's super low. I can't hurt anybody like that. But if it is $40,000, you multiply that by 25, you need a net worth invested in the stock market of $1 million. Now, I like the FI number of thinking about it in terms of like how much monthly passive income do I want? And that's because I'm a real estate investor. Also, I have some funds in the stock market, but I like getting those real estate rent checks in 
I like getting the checks in when the assets sell of these passive real estate investments that I'm a part of. And that helps me understand, well, if I need X amount per month or per year, how much and when are these investments gonna start pulling that off? So I look at my FI number as in just that annual expenses or monthly expenses amount of passive income. The second part of this stage is then refining your investing plan. Now start learning about more types of investing right now, right? Start seeing what the traditional returns are of index fund investing. Look into different types of passive real estate investing. Maybe you wanna take on an active form of real estate investing kind of as a side hustle. I'll give you an example. So I've got some money in the stock market. I used to be an engineer. I had a 401k, right? That's all self-managed right now inside the stock market. And um, I'm also a passive investor in real estate syndications. That's like my choice, the method I love because I love the returns. But I'm also doing things on the side like I changed my first primary residence into a long-term rental and I'm still self-managing that, which is not the funnest thing in the world. I also rent out my house. This is more of an income stream uh, while we travel on Airbnb, right? So these are all just like different types of investing that I like and I think about risk levels in all of them too. So higher risk might actually be higher reward, but I don't want all of my portfolio in a really high risk investment. I don't want any of my portfolio in a high risk investment actually. But sometimes I put money into different places for different reasons, diversification, right? So this is where you're gonna start learning a little bit more about that investing. And you're gonna like doing it because it's really, really fun, especially as you start down this journey. It can be really exciting to think and see that money like making money on its own. So really get into it. So your journal prompt for this stage is to think back about what you've accomplished. This is probably a big feat that you've accomplished. Maybe you're still paying down your debt. That's amazing. Maybe you understand your expenses and now you're making more, you're earning more, and you've set up some automatic investing to be able to get your money working towards you. Think about where you started and where you are now. And honestly, you can do this at every stage of the game, even right when you get started, even watching this video. Where am I now and how is that remarkably different or just a change from where I was 10 years ago. We need to be able to celebrate our wins a lot more. I'm speaking from experience because I'm not very good at seeing the little bits of progress that I'm making daily as that big of a deal. But when I look back upon it, those little tiny steps are what's making this massive progress in the direction that I'm trying to head. Okay, step number five is freedom flexibility. As I mentioned, stages one through four, we're really overlapping, right? They're kind of phases. You're doing all of them a little bit at once, but now we want kind of a concrete stage to celebrate too. At what point before you've reached full financial freedom can you really celebrate? And what I like to think about is when I've reached 50% passive income covering my living expenses, this is a nice threshold in that I'm looking at my distributions from real estate investments and I'm seeing those numbers too tick up. I'm seeing my rental income come in minus the expenses, of course, of that rental property I have. And I'm seeing my net worth inside my stock portfolio start to increase. And I'm doing the calculation and realizing that like, wow, if I wanted to, that could cover about 50% of my living expenses. This is a huge moment to celebrate. The best part of stage five is that the time that it took you to get to 50% passive income is way more than the time it's gonna take you to get to 100%. And that's because of compounding. So you're done with most of the journey, right? If you look at a chart, a projection of your net worth growing, you're gonna see that it snowballs. It grows really, really quickly. I'll link to a video where we show that in graph form up on screen. I encourage you to watch things like that because seeing that at the end of the tunnel is gonna help make this long-term process a lot easier. One thing that you may consider as you do this evaluation and freedom flexibility stage is that you, you can start to journal about like, what would I do if I had full flexibility? What is my ideal life? Hopefully you've been thinking about these things along the way. What kinds of things bring me the most joy in my life? And quite honestly, like how can I start doing those now? You might find that your trajectory of growth is quick enough, in fact, that you can even take off the gas a little bit. You can lower your investment amount or maybe you can go part-time, do something that you wanted to do thinking you would have to do it in retirement, but start doing that now. 
Again, this process defies time and space. I know that's really hard to understand, but trust me, if you just kind of start living up to your values and your priorities, assuming that you've kind of sat back and reflected on what those are, this process can be miraculous for you in that it seems fast, but along the way, you realize that you're actually hitting thresholds along the way that are making your life a lot better. You don't have to wait until that end scenario. Step number six is elevate. This is full financial independence. 100% of your passive investments can cover your expenses right now. You could quit your job. You could get all your time back. You may need to be really wise about how much you're spending every year because your portfolio is going to go up and down. There's going to be some good and bad years. So you do still need to pay quite a bit of attention to make sure you're not overspending, right? If you're right at that very tight threshold of 100% of your expenses. But you may also find that you want to keep working or maybe you want to take a job that you enjoy doing because you get to talk to a lot of people. A lot of my friends are like, I can't wait to become a barista in retirement or live in one of those RVs as a camp host in campgrounds around the country. There's a lot of things you can do to earn money that will just help keep this going. We'll put fuel on the fire once you reach financial independence. Okay, here's some great journal prompts for this sixth stage before we get to our last seventh stage of financial freedom, the path towards it in Fortuna's method. Think about what would full freedom mean to you? What would you do with a million dollars if you had to give it away? What would you do with your time if money was no issue? Who do you want to be around? What kind of relationships have you fostered now and which ones are most important to you? And finally, where do you feel the most joy? Double down on that. The seventh level of this process is legacy. Now, this level is hard for us to imagine, and I'm speaking from experience here, not having yet achieved it, only just thinking about what this might like be down the road and talking to people who have achieved it. This is full financial freedom, like zero money issues ever, zero worrying about if there is enough money to do anything that you absolutely could think of wanting to do. Now, there's different levels of this. Some of you might think, I'm gonna own my own jet and fly around the world and take all my friends on my personal yacht. That's a much higher level of full financial freedom. But some of us just don't ever wanna worry about going out to dinner every night, about buying last minute plane tickets to Portugal with our family, that kind of stuff. I also think about being able to give freely at this stage. That's something personally I'm looking forward to. But then I think about this stage and I stop myself. Why do I have to wait until I have a massive amount of wealth to start living through some of those ideas. Why can't I just buy that plane ticket to Portugal with my family and figure it out as I go? Now, I'm not gonna go into debt doing this, but these are the types of ideas that I that are gonna come out of your journaling along the way. What if I did just start giving to the causes that I believe in now? Why, why do I have to wait to do that? I think that the closer we get to financial freedom, the more we realize that it actually wasn't the goal or the destination the whole time. The point of this process is refining your lifestyle along the way so that you live to your highest values, to your priorities, and you're continually creating freedoms for yourself that allow you to be the best version of yourself. And there's no reason you have to wait until number seven to make that happen. The closer I get to this seventh level, the more I realize that the value of this too is also just deconstructing my ideas around money. Understanding the flow of money, how I spend my time, how I show up for the people I love. And these aren't strict laws of nature. It's not like gravity. Money is not like gravity. It defies space and time. I'm telling you this. All right, I hope that you've made progress along these seven steps and that you take on Fortuna's method and remember that luck and chance and fortune are all playing a huge role in your progress towards financial freedom. If you're looking to see what that snowball effect actually looks like as you progress towards your net worth, I recommend you watching the next video that I linked to above here. It's a great way to visualize that end target of progressing through the stages of financial freedom. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you've gotten to this point in the video and this is valuable and I'll see you next time.